How was the process for you of making the audiobook? Do you know what? It happened quickly and it was really smooth and, and you were really easy to work with. This is my first book and I think when you when you write your first book, it is your it's your everything. It's your ultimate guide. You're putting everything you've ever learned down onto paper and, it, and it, it's so precious to you because it's like this is the last 10, 15 years of my life that I've just put in there. And, and then you say, right, hand it over. I don't really know how this works, but okay, let's just, let's let this guy off the internet, read it for me and <laughs> let's see what happens. Um, but the whole process was, it happened really quickly. It was really easy. And literally I, I went onto the ACX website and it was just one of those things. I think it took me about half an hour, one evening, basically some decorator said, I really want to read your book, but I don't like reading. Can you make it an audio book? And I thought, all right, well, let's, let's see how much that costs and everything like that. So it went on and 48 hours later, I'd had, you know, probably half a dozen auditions, in, including yours. And, and we started the process. And I think within a week, you'd sent me the first hour and stuff like that. And, and as soon as I heard you read it from your audition, I knew that you were going to read it right because you, you're going to read it the way that I wanted it to be read. So obviously, when you when you write it, you have this voice in your head and the cadence of how everything is, is spoken and, and where you want uh, the the emphasis on every word and and you started reading it and you were it, I literally just sat there listening thinking this is exactly how I would read it myself this is how I want it I was like brilliant this is so I can't believe I've you know we've hit the nail right he's hit they hit the nail right <laughs> on the head straight away and I was like superb. John Mears, good to finally talk to you and see you. You too. Nice to meet you, Graham. Yeah, cracking book. I got to say, I got so much out of it. I mean, it's called Sales and Marketing for Decorators. But, you know, we all need a little bit of marketing. And <laughs> I have uh, I felt like I was stealing ideas from the book because, of course, I didn't pay for the book, being the, <laughs> being the person who narrated it. But it is a cracking book. I want to talk about the book in a bit. But first of all, I want to find out about you. What's your background? Yeah, so I have been in sales and marketing for my entire career now. So where are we? 14, 14 years I've been in sales and marketing. I started um, in retail sales. Uh, I moved up and then started doing a lot more business-to-business -business stuff. Um, and then more recently, I moved into the uh, painting industry, painting and decorating industry, uh, working for a manufacturer. So we manufacture paints, uh, and obviously I am now speaking to painters and decorators on a daily basis, and, and something that came up was there's just not a great deal of, of help and advice for people, uh, you know, sole traders, smaller businesses, painters and decorators, to help with their sales and marketing. Uh, so it, it felt like a, a good fit, considering it's something that I've done my entire career, to start sharing some of that knowledge and, and help out the customers. Um, yeah, a lot of... You know, you've alluded to the book. It's 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 written for decorators, but sales and marketing, the principles and everything like that are are you know universal and they, and they'll work for for pretty much anyone. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I've been doing. It's, it's sales and marketing has always been a, a passion of mine, and this is where it's led to. So when you were a kid leaving school, <laughs> did did you make a decision that you wanted to go into that line of work, or did you just fall into it and then? eat up the information and get really good at it. Yeah, it's um, it's one of those things in sales that we always say, no one no one chooses to go into sales. <laughs> you always end up in sales. <laughs> right, I see. It's, it's usually you end up in sales because you're no good at anything else. Um, but that's not that's not strictly true. true. I mean, there's lots of lots of people who, who work in sales. A, were you were you an, an entrepreneur as a kid? Were you, did, were you, did you? As in, was I going around sort of selling Pokemon cards and well, and yeah, that, and I mean that, stuff like that. That's where the bug normally hits. I know that uh, I got into the most trouble I ever got into at school was I made a book on the school sports day, but unfortunately right. I got caught. But uh, I didn't become a bookmaker. But <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering if you if you had that kind of that flair as a kid. Yeah, I guess there was always a little bit of that in me. I, I was sort of got in a bit of trouble for that sort of thing. I'd like to 
buying and selling things and trying to really? trying to trying a little bit turn a little bit of profit to buy some sweets <laughs> yeah when i was a kid but but yes essentially I, I i fell into the role um and sort of as soon as i started selling and talking to people on a daily basis i i loved it it was every day was different every interaction with a customer was always different it was always every day you could go in and just try and be one percent better than you were yesterday and because sales and marketing is it's so measurable mm. um oh there's nowhere course, to hide <laughs> well that's it and and you, everything gets measured and then those measurements then turn into commission payments so you become just obsessed with or well, what can i do to be one percent better and then again and then again and then again and before you know it you're earning a lot more money and you think yeah i really want to knuckle down and you know i still read a book a week on on sales and marketing trying to learn and just get as much information as many ideas as possible just to keep going to that next level and keep getting better and better so it, it appeals to my personality of always wanting to learn more and wanting to do do better the next day right so you absorbed all this information like a sponge and you condensed it down into this fabulous book for painters and decorators had you ever written a book before no this is the the first one i um I started writing at the start of the year. Uh, I've set up my own website and started writing a blog uh, about sales and marketing and, and targeting sort of different questions that I got quite often from painters and decorators. Started writing blogs and, and to my surprise, people started reading them and I was like, oh, this is great. And then I started getting some feedback and then just one person just popped up on Facebook and said, you know, you should, you should write a book about this. And I thought, all right. And we were in lockdown at the time and so I didn't have a lot going on. I thought, all right. So I started just writing out a chapter list and before I knew it, I'd started typing away at this book and I thought, Oh, here we go. <laughs> I'm quite, quite enjoying this. And yeah, there's a, there's a lot in there that you think I wanted to create a book where often I'll read, you know, as I said, I, I read a lot of sales and marketing books um, and there'll be, a book on when one very specific section of sales and marketing and what I wanted to do was try and take you know the hundreds of books that I've read just take out the nuggets from each one and put it across in a way that's really easy to implement uh, and, and something that you can just do for your business so that every chapter you read in this book you should be able to go yeah I can put that into my business tomorrow uh, and that will help it be a little bit better yeah, there's no wastage in there. What I've noticed about a lot of the books that I read, not the ones that I narrate, but other books I read, <laughs> sometimes they do kind of, it looks, it almost looks like people are trying to pad things out. But your book hits the deck running. Each section, whether it's, you know, to do with internet marketing or just, you know, being able to charge more for a painting and decorating job by presenting a better image. And you talk about that not only online but your image when you show up to quote for a job and all the rest of it it's it's very because i'm guessing the painters and decorators they don't get into that kind of business because they want to get into marketing that's not their thing but yeah. for you to bring your expect your your years of, of experience and what you've learned and then to communicate it to them i think that was very clever that it doesn't mess about this book just gets on with it and each principle is covered. It's broken down into into the different sections and the different chapters, and away you go. What's the feedback been like from painters and decorators so far? It's been really good, and I appreciate you saying that because that was really key to what I wanted the book to be like. And I think it came from because I started writing blogs first. Right. The blogs for me were, I need to make these short, concise get the message across and give the and give painters and decorators something they can implement straight away because otherwise they're not going to read it nobody's going to read a sort of 10 page blog it needs to be quite concise and and deliver that message very quickly and i took that sort of mindset into the book and thought right let's make every chapter bang 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 here's your information go and do it none of this like you say that the pad and the fluff and i see that in a, a lot in books where you'll have sort of 10 chapters where they're just sort of going, right, this is what I'm going to tell you. And then they have two chapters telling you it and then 10 chapters telling you what they've just told you. And, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you're like, 
okay, that's a book. Yeah, that's, that's 300 pages, but really I only needed about 20 pages of that. Yeah. Um, and I, I wanted to av- avoid that, and I wanted to go bang, 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 bang like that. And yeah, the feedback's been superb. Um, decorators have uh, are contacting me daily and saying that they they tried this and this has worked. And there's there's nothing better for me when someone will put a message on social media or something like and just say, literally, I took John Mears's email script, sent it to somebody, and got a response, and I've got a meeting with them next week. You know, this stuff really works, and I'm like. This is exactly what I wanted, you know, people to go out there, use the information in the book and, and start seeing the results of it. So it, it's, it's amazing when that happens. It's brilliant. That is great because people in sales and marketing get a bit of get a bit of a bad rap as being a bit, you know, I don't know, a bit spivvy and a bit bit wide boys and everything. But the truth is, when it's done right, you're yeah. you're helping people's businesses grow. And you're solving problems for them, you know. They've, you know, time is money. And you mentioned this in the book as well, how, you know, people spend a, a lot of time working on jobs for, for money when they really could be making more money and doing less work. I mean, you, you, you boil it down into that. So it, that must be a great feeling to know that that's actually happening. And uh, and, and as I say, I, I got a lot from it as well, particularly, you know, because with the audio books I do, you, you talk about quoting jobs as a painter and decorator and how you can ask for more money if you present yourself as a as, as a more you know the customer's going to get more value from from having you do it and so i've i've really taken that on board and you know i work hard on my website you, you know and uh f- for the audiobooks and stuff and it it is working and i am charging more now since i read your book out loud so uh, yeah, no, I am, <laughs> and uh, it, it's you know I've changed the way I pitch things. Actually, we should talk about the um, the audition I did for it because um, I nearly didn't get the gig. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> was good fun. <laughs> um. You you put yeah, on so... there. I think when you when you put on there, you put a sample from the book. For, for people who don't know how it works with ACX, is is you put a, a sample of your book, you put it out as an open audition. People all around the world will read the script. You listen to the recordings and, and you pick one. And in yours, you said you wanted someone, I think you said you wanted someone Southern. You didn't want someone Northern, but Southern yeah. English. Yeah. And and I can't remember, but somehow I got the vibe of you wanted it to be not too posh because it was, it would, you know, painters and decorators uh, in general, uh, working class people. So I thought about the only painter and decorator I know, which is a bloke who who I hired when I worked at a radio station in London that was for tradespeople, and that was Trevor Mangan. So I, when I did the audition, I tried to do it like Trevor. He's a real knockabout, kind of, he's from Guildford and, or, or that way. And, uh, and you got in touch and said, you've bunged this weird voice on, why don't you do it in your normal <laughs> voice? So yeah, so I had to redo it in, a, in, a, in my normal voice and then I got it, yeah. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was funny, I was sort of, it was one of those perfect examples of when the customer, which was me in this case, often doesn't really know what they want. <laughs> <laughs> or I, I misinterpreted it, it and went too well, far. I, I put it forward and, yeah, I was typing it. I'd never done this before. And I was like, oh, you can sort of request certain accents and things like that. And I was like, OK, well, I thought, well, let's just try and get someone that sounds a bit like me. Yeah. Um, but, but but it's not me. Um, and so I started typing this thing out. And then you're your audition came through. I thought, oh, that's that's quite good. And I recognised that name. I look, and then I looked you up and I said, oh, yes. I, yeah, I remember Graham from from uh, the radio show and everything like that. So I went onto your website and started looking at your interviews like these that you'd done for other people. And I thought, he sounds complete. Oh, where's this voice? <laughs> <laughs> so I just messaged you and just said, you know, if you do this in your normal voice, it'll actually be better. <laughs> and then you sent, resent it and I was like, yeah, that's it. Perfect. Yeah. Let's go with that. <laughs> and then we were in business and off we went. Yeah. So, no, so how absolutely. did you find then the process? Because um, you'd never written a book before. So this is, yeah. this is, let's, you know, this is your life's work. This is, you've put mm. your heart and soul into this. This is information you want to get across. When you wrote the book, you've rewritten it. You've done first draft, second draft, all the pain and suffering that goes through reading a book. And then you have to hand it over to a bloke you've never even met to read it out yeah. loud and get the message across. How was the process for you of making the audio book? Do you know what? It happened quickly and it was really smooth and, and you were really easy to work with. As you say, when you, 
this is my first book and i think when you when you write your first book it is your it's your everything it's your ultimate guide you're putting everything you've ever learned down onto paper and, it, and it, it's so precious to you because it's like this is the last 10 15 years of my life that i've just put in there and and then you say right hand it over i don't really know how this works but okay let's just let's let this guy off the internet read it for me and <laughs> see what happens um but the whole process was it happened really quickly it was really easy and literally i i went onto the acx website and it was just one of those things i think it took me about half an hour one evening basically some decorator said i really want to read your book but i don't like reading can you make it an audio book and i thought all right well let's let's see how much that costs and everything like that so it went on and 48 hours later i'd had you know probably half a dozen auditions in, including yours and and we started the process and i think within a week you'd sent me the first hour and stuff like that and and as soon as i heard you read it from your audition i knew that you were going to read it right because you, you're going to read it the way that i wanted it to be read so obviously when you when you write it you have this voice in your head and the cadence of how everything is is spoken and and where you want uh, the the emphasis on every word and and you started reading it and you were it, I literally just sat there listening thinking this is exactly how I would read it myself this is how I want it I was like brilliant this is so I can't believe I've you know we've hit the nail right he's hit they hit the nail right on the head <laughs> straight away and I was like superb let this let this man go and, and do his thing I, I think throughout the whole thing there were probably what two little one word mistakes or something like that oh yeah that just... you're gonna get you know how many hours was the book in the end it was it was uh... nearly nearly six hours nearly six hours uh, yeah you're gonna get the yeah. odd thing but the way i do it is i split them up i send it to you in sections yeah. you check it when i've got it right then we move on because if, if i'm mispronouncing something and you know particularly yeah. with jargon or something or a tool or something that's something i don't know about from painting and decorating yeah i don't want to make that same mistake again and again and again so we yeah. do it that way. Well, I'm glad it, it really did all work out. I track the uh, audio books that I've put out on uh, Audible, and you, it'll put, uh, you know, I go into Audible search, anyone can do it, and my, put my name in, and all the books come up, and you can uh, rank them for which, you know, which is the newest out and all the rest of it. And one of them is you can rank which is the best seller. And a couple of times I've been on there, is yours has been at the top of the list. So excellent, it is excellent. the audio book is is moving, you know. Um, it is, yeah. Yeah, so that's good. So you're getting plenty of royalties. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Well, it takes a little while for them to come through, as you know, but oh, it um, does, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's 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 so good just to know that people are listening to it and people are reading it and and getting something from it. Like I say said earlier, it's those when the comments come back that people say that they've implemented one of the changes that I talk about and it's starting to have an effect. That's amazing and i the audiobook was really important was when i looked at it from the perspective of, of a decorator um a lot of decorators listen to audiobooks all day long you know they work on their own typically uh, and they'll be doing tasks that you are know, very they're very good at and they can almost do subconsciously you know they're, they're sanding down all day long they can listen to an entire audiobook in a day and i thought this is a perfect way to deliver the message to a painter and decorator they can literally do it whilst they're working and then start implementing the changes straight away so yeah it was brilliant and yeah i can't thank you enough for for your help on it that it was great it was good fun to do it was like i say i i got i got a lot from it so as far as marketing for painters and decorators goes what's the biggest mistake then that painters and decorators make when it comes to trying to market their business i think the biggest thing and, and the message that I have to get across to painters and decorators most often is that sales and marketing should be a part of their business in the first place. Yeah. Uh, a lot of small business owners, when they first start their company, uh, and if we talk about obviously the example being painters and decorators, they'll start their company and they'll do loads of marketing. They'll do leaflets and social media campaigns and everything like that. And they then start to build up a, a base of, of regular customers. And it's almost like their goal is to get to a point where they don't have to advertise anymore. And it's trying to educate um, educate people on the fact that if you continue to advertise, I mean, I mean, look at it, Apple, McDonald's, BP, all these big companies, 
they don't need to advertise, but they do on a continuous basis. And there's a reason for that. And for, for small businesses, it's about getting bigger and better and more reliable sources of, of income. Uh, there's nothing worse for me than when I see a decorator on social media saying, oh, things have gone a bit quiet. Um, and they don't know how to deal with it because they haven't advertised in 20 years since they started the business up. They've just relied on word of mouth and, and recommendations. And, and you can't rely on word of mouth and recommendations. You're not in control of that. Uh, so showing decorators that it's the way that you can be in, in control of business coming to you and always be attracting new customers. And it means that if you have too many customers, then it's basic supply and demand at that point. And, and like you say, you can start to put your prices up and you can start to understand your true value. And it means that you can specialize and focus on just the things that you really want to do. I, I speak to a lot of decorators and a lot of small business owners. They feel like they have to take every job that comes along, um, no matter what it is, because you don't know, you can't turn away work. That's what they think. But that means that a lot of decorators will spend the summer doing exterior painting and then they'll moan that they don't like exterior painting. <laughs> and it's like, well, if you just want to paint kitchens or something like that and you want to specialize in that, with your, if you get your sales and marketing right, then you can just do that every day. And then you can work for customers who truly value you, doing work that fulfills you and earning more than you're earning now. So it's, it's trying to get that all across to people that you can have a much better um, a much better relationship with your business and, and, and working environment in general if you put the effort into attracting better types of customer. And all the answers to those questions of people watching this now going, well, how do I do that? They're all in yeah. this book and in the audio book. It's all in there and it's all laid out. And you mentioned lots of things about how the painters and decorators present themselves as part of the marketing, right down yeah. to having a clean van and showing up in nice overalls and that. And you you go through the social media, through Facebook, through Twitter, ev YouTube, everything, all that side of it too, from the old yeah. school things, from ads in, in own post offices, and you know it, the whole range of ways to market. So it seems to me that it is a combined thing, and I got that feeling from the book. But for the, the, the sake of this video, and the answer to this might be no, is there one thing that is more important than anything else when you're presenting yourself or marketing your painting and decorating business? Um, I think, yeah, you talk about image and, and brand presence. I think having a good brand if you're going to try and encapsulate everything, that's something you could really focus on. If you wanted to focus on one thing, it would be having that real good brand presence. And what I mean by that, and I, I talk about it in the book, is there are ways that you perceive a brand and that can change completely how customers talk to you, the sort of customers you attract. And in the same way that if you walk into a shop Often you'll walk into a, a shop and without looking at the price tags or anything like that, you can tell whether it's expensive stuff or it's not. Um, sometimes you'll walk into a designer store and, and there's no price tags, but you walk in there and think this is one of those places where <laughs> if you have to ask how expensive it is, you can't afford it. That sort of, <laughs> that sort of place. And, and that's all brand and, and everything that goes into it. And I think even the basic things like like you mentioned showing decorators if they turn up in dirty overalls and a, a, a dirty van and it's all messy and they pull out a scrap of paper to write the quote on then people are are already in a frame of mind of they sort of know how much this decorator is going to cost yeah but if someone turns up very professionally and they've got an id badge or and their van is all sign written and looks fantastic and they turn up with an iPad and you think this is a different level of decorator here. Uh, and you, you sort of, before they've even entered into a conversation, you've conditioned the customer into knowing you're a more expensive decorator. Yeah, this uh, is a premium product. Yeah, exactly right. And yeah. a lot of decorators, 99% of the decorators I'll see on social media, you look at their work and it's incredible that just the the things they can do 
to, with a room it is it blows your mind that the process involved in it and the clean lines and making walls smooth as a billiard table it's it's incredible and their attention to detail is amazing i think a lot of decorators are like that and that's why they get into it they have great pride in their work i mean i but, my uh both of my grandfathers were painters and decorators and oh, brilliant. my um my granddad hughes which is a granddad on my mum's side my my nana uh, his uh his wife always used to say to me you know there's only one fella that that paints ceilings better than your granddad and that's michelangelo <laughs> the yeah. pride in his work you know and my uncle norman took me to the uh, St. George's Hall in Liverpool and showed me the gold leaf that he did. His granddad did that. The, the pride, it was not only from him, but within the family of the stuff yeah. he did. And I think it's true of a lot of trades, but I think it is particularly true of painters and decorators. Yeah. Yeah, painters and decorators, they're the finishers. They're, you've got all the builders and the plasterers and everything, and then the decorators come in and, and they give it that final touch and make it look amazing. So the pride in the work is is seriously there, and, and it should be. I mean, skills like gold leafing and stuff like that, you, you don't learn that overnight. That's years and years of work. And to, to build up that skill uh, takes a long time. And, and this is what I'm trying to show decorators is, your work is right up here, you know, the, the level and the attention to detail and everything like that. But your your brand image and your advertising is down here. So you're attracting customers that match that. And then you've got this disparity and you're wondering why your customers don't value the level of skill you're bringing. Uh, and if you can bring up your brand and your image to match your level of skill, then you're just going to get you're going to be a lot more fulfilled in, in what you're doing. And I think it's trying to make decorators realize that when you go self-employed, you're almost not a decorator anymore. You're a business that sells painting and decorating services. You know, you've sold the job before you open a tin of paint. So you need to show your customers before you've started decorating how brilliant you are and show them that you have an eye for detail and if you turn up in in messy overalls and stuff like that, they're going to think, is he going to be sloppy on the job? Is he does he really have this eye for detail that I'm looking for? Where if you turn up pristine and and you look like you take everything seriously and your van's very tidy, simple things like that, they can all add up, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, if people don't think that's real, just think about say the restaurant trade. You know, you. You would go into a cafe and you wouldn't pay more than a fiver for a burger, but you go into somewhere that looks pretty posh and people will pay up to 20 quid for a hamburger. And yeah. it's just because <laughs> of the way it's presented. It really yeah. is. Um, there's, yeah, there's so, so many examples for that. You know, even down to, you can get water out of the tap for free, but <laughs> if it, when it's delivered in a, in a beautiful looking bottle with in a, French a convenient name. location, with a French <laughs> name, yeah. And suddenly... <laughs> You're paying more for water than you do for uh, petrol when you're like, what's yeah. going on here? Yeah, <laughs> it is. a cost. <laughs> it's, it's a great book. And, you know, I'm not in the painting and decorating game, but I've, I've lifted principles from it, as I've said. Um, it's called Sales and Marketing for Decorators. It's available as an audio book right now. John Mears, thank you very much for choosing me as your narrator for your book and continued success with it. What's next? Well, I think I think next is is hopefully more books. Uh, this yeah, was okay. uh, sort of my my ultimate guide. Here it is. Let's put it put it out there for you. Um, but I think I, I'm going to start looking at taking different section of sections of that and, and making sort of supplementary books to it. So if you want to do like a a real deep dive into social media or a real deep dive into you know just the advertising aspects, then I'm looking at starting to create books on those so you can read the, you know, the full sales and marketing. There's everything I know from the last 15 years and then go, oh, I'd really like to learn a bit more on that. And then I'll do like a, a supplement guide for it. So, yeah, all being well, I'll, I'll be in contact again soon. All right. Good luck with that. John <laughs> Mears, sales and marketing for decorators. If you'd like to get a, a free download, if you go to the, the, uh, the blurb in YouTube below, there's a link there that will take you to Audible where you can get a free trial of Audible for 30 days and you can download John Mears Sales and Decorating for Market for Sales and Marketing for Decorators. You can download it for free. Click the link below, 
and get the uh, the free 30-day trial for Audible and you're all set. John, thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Graham.